sixth grade, we're going to finish up lesson three from chapter seven. I'll start with a quick review. Um, we've been talking about food chains, food webs, adaptations that animals have to survive in the environment. We started in lesson one with structural adaptations, you know, what your body looks like to do that, behavioral adaptations, the different things you do, um, and body processes like hibernation and things like that so they can survive in that. Uh, lesson two was a lot about the energy flow and the food pyramids and the food chains, um, things like that. And then we got lesson three. We ended that uh, Friday before Thanksgiving break. Uh, with competition, uh, animals fighting for the resources that they need and how competition increases as resources become more and more limited uh, to try to get those things. And then we ended with predator and prey, um, the way God made animals fight for each other and kill each other. Today we're going to talk about symbiosis and what that is, and we'll get some examples of that. Okay. Hey, hopefully you got your notes sitting here ready to rock and roll. And we'll get started on what symbiosis is. Can you tell what's happening in the weevil beetle shown on this page? We're looking here, guys. The long, thin object growing on its back is a killer fungus. The fungus and beetle are an example of symbiosis. Symbiosis is a, is a one, close, long-term relationship between organisms that benefits at least one of the organisms. So you got number one done, guys. It's always between two organisms. One is benefited. Now we're going to talk about the three types of symbiosis on this page, but in one case, one is benefited, the other one is hurt. In one case, one is benefited, the other one doesn't care. And in one case, both are benefited. But to fall under a symbiosis, you need at least one benefit from it. Okay, so right now, as we look at this one, the fungus is getting a benefit. Uh, the weevil is definitely not, and we'll talk about how that one works. Example number one type of symbiosis. Parasitism is a type of symbiosis in which one organism is helped, but the other one is harmed. Number two in your notes. A parasite is the organism that is benefited in the relationship. Number three in your notes. A host is the organism that is harmed in this relationship. Number four in your notes. Parasites don't usually kill their hosts. Number five in your notes, because they depend on the host for food. But the parasites often weaken their hosts. The weevil, beetle, and fungus have a parasite-host relationship. Which organism do you think benefits? Okay, the fungus is getting the benefit, guys. He's pulling nutrients out of this weevil and living off his back. But if this fungus kills this bull weevil, there's no nutrients for it to pull. And then the fungus dies, guys. So it's pretty important that a lot of these parasites, we usually hear these words and we cringe and we think a parasite's out there to kill us. No, a parasite normally is not going to kill you. Now, it eventually might, guys. And 99% of the time when the parasite kills the host, then the parasite dies as well. So that's why they normally don't kill those things. All right, we're going to start looking at some examples here. And number five, like the fungus on the beetle, many parasites live on their hosts. Did you ever have a pet with fleas? B in your notes. Fleas are parasites that live off the blood of mammals. As the flea obtains the blood, it can cause itching and possibly disease in the host. That's why there's a lot of medication out there to try to keep your uh, pet safe from fleas. Uh, parasites may also live inside the host. Number six in your notes. Okay, so it can also live sometimes on the host like this. You think of a flea biting a host, um, but it can also live inside the host as well. Okay, horses, for example, sometimes take in parasites called tapeworms when they graze in a pasture. The tapeworms live and feed in the horse's intestines. The tapeworms steal nutrients from the horse. Tapeworms can cause poor digestion and slow growth for the horse. So guys, what this parasite does is it lives in the in the dirt and the grass. The horse eats it, it gets into its stomach, then it attaches onto its intestines, and as the nutrients pass through the intestines, the tapeworm eats some of those nutrients, which then gives your um, horse not the nutrients it needs. That's why it's going to be a smaller horse. It's going to have poor digestion we're going to look at because it's not getting the resources. And that tapeworm is going to grow bigger and bigger. Now, can that tapeworm actually get too big to kill the horse? You bet it can. And as soon as that happens, the tapeworm most likely is going to die. So um, those things can happen into all kinds of animals and humans alike to do those things. Okay, 
Um, I'm going to scroll down real quick. This is the next page to get you your last example down here. So the other page in your book talks about symbiosis that's going on in the human body. One right here. We already talked about pets with fleas, but ticks get food by piercing the skin and sucking out blood. So you might have uh, had a tick in you. If you walk through the woods, sometimes you get ticks uh, climbing on you and then they try to bite into you and um, they can pass the Lyme disease uh, to you through that way. The other one down here is athlete's foot. Athlete's foot is caused by a fungus that lives on the skin of the foot. A foot infected with athlete's foot looks dry and cracked and it itches. Okay, so parasites live and it's getting the nutrients off you and you're getting itchy, dry looking, cracked skin. Okay, that's a harm to you, a benefit to one. That's parasitism. A tick sucking your blood, harm to you, benefit for them. Parasitism. All right, let's go back to the next one. Sometimes when two organisms live together, both organisms benefit. This kind of symbiotic relationship is called mutualism. I would, would like this to see it in yellow, guys, but it's not. So mutualism, both organisms benefit. The moray eel and the cleaner shrimp in the photo live together in a mutualistic relationship. So when I first look at this picture, I'm like, uh, this scary looking animal is about to eat this thing for lunch. That's not what's happening at all. The cleaner shrimp eats dead tissue and parasites from the mouth of the eel. Okay, so they're both benefiting. What is the shrimp getting? The shrimp's getting lunch, right? as it eats this stuff from the eel. What's the eel getting? The eel's getting rid of dead tissue and parasites in its mouth. So they have mutualism going on here. They're both receiving a benefit from it. On the next page in the human body, E. coli bacteria that live in the intestines take in nutrients from digested food. We're like, oh man, it's stealing our nutrients. They help your body by making vitamin K, which helps clot your blood. So at first when I was reading this, I'm like, oh, E. coli. I always heard like you, we have an E. coli breakout. That's a bad thing. It's, it's like a food poisoning. Now, guys, that can be true, but E. coli in general in, is living in your intestines. You need it because it helps make the vitamins for you. So that's an example of a mutualistic relationship when it's wor working properly, obviously. Um, it's helping you make the vitamins. It has something to live off of. So keep in mind, we have a ton of bacteria in our body, guys. And too often we think bacteria bad. No, sometimes we get a benefit from them. Okay, third type of relationship. Commensalism is symbiosis that helps one organism, but neither helps nor harms the other. So you're down here at number eight. One is helped but the other isn't helped or harmed. So the other one kind of cares less is the best way to say it. One's getting a benefit, the other one doesn't care. You may have seen photographs of a whale with barnacles, A in your notes, on its side. As the whale moves from place to place, the barnacles get food from the water. The barnacles do not help, but the barnacles do not harm the whale, okay? You may not realize that you are part of many symbiotic relationships. Most are harmless, but some relationships can be harmful. Read about some of the relationships on the next page. Okay, so on this page, guys, you had parasitism, you had mutualism, and now here you have an example of commensalism. This air plant gets a place to live. The tree is neither helped nor harmed because it's not taking nutrients from the tree, guys. It's just attached to it and living off it. So it's kind of like what we talked about on Friday when we have competition. If we're eating different things, like the gazelles and the wildebeest, eating different types of grass, that's who cares? So different nutrients, doesn't matter. So that's an air plant on a tree. On the next page, this one kind of might freak us out. Mites that cover your skin and live at the base of your eyelashes get food by eating dead skin cells. Okay, so I think it's gross when you think about the dust mites that live on us, guys, but... They're getting the food they need. That's good for them. So they're not harming me. Okay? They're taking care of dead skin cells. So it's an example of commensalism. It doesn't hurt me. Um, dust falls to the ground. My dead skin cells will fall off me. If a uh, mite eats it, great. If a mite doesn't eat it, I don't care either way, guys. So that's why it's commensalism. It doesn't matter to me. So they give you the examples on this page of different things that are going on in your body. What I want to stress here is here. Most are harmless but there definitely can be ones that are harmful. It's pretty much true of everything. So you got an example of the different relationships that are going out there on there, guys, and you're trying to keep parasitism, 
Mutualism and commensalism are all examples of a symbiosis. So it's a good uh, vocabulary word for us uh, to keep in mind as we work our way through that. All right, extra credit for today. Uh, here's the extra credit statement. I've heard that 90% of all dust on the floor is dead skin cells. So you write that down. But if you want extra credit number two, you find and verify that. So I might have got the percentage wrong. So you go to the internet and you said, what percent of dust on the floor is actually dead skin cells? And if the answer is some different number, you write that down to say, Mr. Bauer, it's actually, and give you the percent that you found. All right. Have a great day. Good luck on the worksheet. Um, use your notes here. It'll help you on some of those uh, matching ones on the bottom. You have the choices between these types of relationships. They're all found on here. All right. Have a day, guys.